to organization whether it is private government profit making or non profit making must innovate in a global interconnected world economic sustainability and market growth depends upon innovation so strategic innovation gets at the core of how an organization should manage change and adapt to the changing circumstances without an innovation strategy innovation improvement efforts can easily become a gr grab bag of much touted best practices today innovation acts as a game changer for any organization business players like apple dell computers amazon samsung ford Mot motors nestle and many others embraced innovations strategically to be a survival on today's uncertain corporate landscape even during this pandemic period in the field of education as well the educators are using innovative ways to disseminate the knowledge to the learners and to elaborate further on this electrifying topic we have with us dr harish anand director ctfrt and our esteemed guest dr suresh chadda professor and ex chairman ups our uh, dr harish anand would be presenting the presidential address for the webinar and followed by an address by our esteemed speaker so dr harish anand is the founder director of center for trade facilitation and research in textiles that is ctfrt and chief economic advisor vardhman textiles he is having a rich experience of more than two decades in the corporate world he has to his credit a doctoral degree in economics his core area of research is international trade being industry economist he has been dealing with policy issues associated with wto ftas regional trade agreements etc his plentiful contribution not only elevated the textile and steel industry rather he has contributed much for the education sector also he is a revered member of various committees like cii national committee on textile cii national committee on power fiki and has been member of iqac of college since its inception he is keenly involved in the area of education and contributing for the betterment of college he is a man of values and wants to impart these to our young generation as well he has many articles published in reputed newspapers and journals to his credit Dr Anand is the author of a book titled Global Textile Industry New Dynamics Investment Manufacturing Locations and Directions of World Trade 2020 The list of his contribution is never ending but the clock is warning me of that I am running off time so without wasting much time I would like to invite Dr Harish Anand to present his presidential address so over to you Dr Anand Dr. Harish Anand. Uh, just a minute he is not able to unmute himself he'll be joining in a minute So till uh, uh, Dr. Harish Anand is able to join, let me formally welcome uh, uh, Professor S. K. Chetta. Uh, he is uh, guru of most of us. Uh, over a period of 45 years and more, he has uh, trained the managers and the teachers in this area, and he is well known for his contribution in the area of the marketing, international business, and. Uh, it is indeed uh, a great uh, player for all of us to listen to him today 
and also professor uh, dr harish anand who is economic advisor to vardhaman is also contributing a lot in the area of the strategic management and uh, he is coordinating with the di different governments of policy making hello and uh, would uh, i request uh, uh, him to start now mr dr harish anand. Ajay sir, I am audible. Yes, sir. Hello. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, thank sir. You. Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. Thank you, sir. <coughs> so, Chada, sir, we joined. Can you see? I am. 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 I Good morning. I am Dr. Chadda. Good morning, sir. Uh, Hello. Okay. You can start, Hello. sir. Can I start, sir? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Hello. So you are Hello. audible? Yes, sir. You Thank are you. audible. Uh, sorry for the uh, trouble. Uh, unfortunately, uh, first of all, I welcome uh, Professor Chadda Sahab, Ajay Ji, Principal, and Sarita Ji, Event Coordinator, and other faculty members and some other uh, guests who who are here on this occasion. So it gave me great uh, satisfaction. to be a part of this uh, interaction of this webinar basically uh, a satisfaction comes but it is a difficult time of the corona period and the way this difficult time is turned into uh, an opportunity for learning through series of webinar for that i specifically congratulate the sarvindo college and uh, specifically uh, our principal so what make this even uh, more delightful is the presence of the eminent person uh, like chadda sir uh, who is with us and i just read from his profile that he has got a 40 year of teaching and research experience with him in international business and uh, <clears throat> certainly and we will the topic of this interaction we kept is for strategic innovation for to uh, this webinar that uh, make me little bit more excited because we have been dealing with strategy from the last 15 years in vardhaman uh, i am specifically looking after this portfolio but incidentally we never talk about strategic innovation we have invited people from outside also but incidentally uh, never this topic uh, this the the strategic innovation on this so if we review that what i have been doing all these years uh, we are basically dealing with strategy and strategy is for us a component that connect us what we are to our objectives what we want it to be or planning backward or having some objective and uh, then to see that how we can achieve that or that this is strategy has been for us in the with us uh, in the last 15 years in vardhaman so primarily we have so far dealt with incremental growth in next 5 year how much we will grow vardhaman become in 2000 in 2005 and then 10 and 20 and so on how we can bring improvement mostly without benchmarking we wanted to improve let us reduce wastage by 2% or 3% or increase sale or in which business we need to capacity this has been some of the time uh, of our strategic meeting concern in yarn we should grow in fabric we should grow how much and then how to keep financially the company sound how to see that how conservation conservative approach can be you can say uh, taken together with leveraging growth for example when we should go on loans and then when we should start paying back so all this 15 years we have been doing this that even we have contemplated that when to exit a business like a swing thread business vardhaman left and it was sold out the, so these are the things that we have been doing strategy but basically uh, while doing so uh, we were having an advantage that we were prosperous company we were reflecting there is money and we wanted to invest and while doing so we have been uh, you can say wanted to be cautious that we should not uh, commit the mistakes which lot of companies have done and face the bankruptcy kind of thing so these this is what we have been uh, strategic approach but they are they looks like more incremental more improvements but when we look at the strategic innovation and uh, when i glance through some of the research paper in last couple of 2 3 days or little bit earlier also i found that uh, we, we we never approach this strategic innovation as a company there was strategic innovation and uh, i think it is something else 
but incidentally uh, when i was reviewing this literature i am not touching that because uh, learner sir is there he will share with you and of course you can get all these things on internet on webinar uh, uh, this websites or youtubes etc what i from where i refer so i will not waste your time that but uh, while i was going through these things i i just uh, one incident or one fact or i can say a case came out of in our mind which i can share probably that that make um, maybe uh, you can say where is near to strategic innovation or something that so but but we never did it like a strategic innovations so i thought we uh, let me place this uh, case with jada sir uh, in his presence and uh, in the presence of other faculty members but ki whether this case is a fit case for uh, a strategic innovation study in business so uh, if it is something so can you uh, uh, sarita ji run that uh, slide yes sir i will if you can come to the first slide yes sir So is this screen visible? Okay. I, right. Sir. Next one. Next one. Next one. Hello. Yeah. Thank you. So basically, I wanted to. No, no. Next one. Again, you come back to the first slide. Second slide. So this one. Yeah. Thank this you. One? Right. this one yes yes so uh, this is the basically uh, no no coming back you are moving to next please come to that indian map back hello yeah please keep it here so uh, this is basically the case of the one special so uh, we reflected the, the, this is the case uh, where the uh, group has made almost a mind to sell it off this is a steel business plant it was 18 20000 ton plant about 10 20 years at 15 year back and it was decided and you can see that it is in the punjab and where it is it is a very costly land we cannot grow uh, land is very expensive locational disadvantage there that you have got raw material basically which is the steel scrap and that come from ports and mainly and then the power cost in punjab it is the highest one of the high Yes, in uh, before the government gives subsidy and a couple of years back, and then there was uh, it is the one of the most polluted zone also because of the steel making and other uh, textile mills or so. Ludhiana is a very you can say uh, uh, declared as a pollution sensitive zone, so you, they do not give permission to expand specifically to the steel mills. And then there are regulatory hurdles that you to increase your plant capacity to produce more. you have to uh, take the permission of the electricity department and they simply says that you have to increase uh, your infrastructure and that cost crores of rupees plus the laws of the state don't permit that kind of uh, expansion in the capacity so it is not possible to uh, build that infrastructure here and most importantly that the organization itself has no willingness to expand capacity in steel being a textile company primarily so the from here you can make a uh, you can uh, build a case a future outlook of this kind of plant that is by and large was going to and probably uh, this is a one situation that we never felt in any of the time in the past for this strategic planning we did we did strategic planning from a very comfortable point of view but this was a you can say situation uh, which was a do or die kind of situation and uh, we need to look at it can you shift to the next slide No, no, sorry. Next slide. Thank you. <clears throat> Please keep it here. <clears throat> so uh, when we uh, it, the contemplation was going on, it was basically Mr. Sachin Jain idea, who is the MD of that company. And when we reflected that, okay, fine. Uh, if we cannot grow, is it time to close down the steel plant or something can be done? And then we reflected upon the some of the international experiences in this regard that how basically in the world steel industry has grown. Specifically, this kind of steel we are making a special steel that goes in the making of uh, uh, automobile and other uh, similar applications. So we found that probably it, uh, it it shifted from the United States to Japan. There it remained for around 50 years. 
and then it has shifted to the korea for it has taken 20 to 25 to 30 years to establish and now it is in china the question is ki if we see this corollary there probably there is a chances of this steel industry to grow in india but where we are located we have no chance of coming up so so the, the, this this was the contemplation means there is a chance to grow but the constraint we are having we were not having so we don't know that what strategy we uh, need to follow what we should do should we cannot increase our sale because uh, we are producing almost the same thing what is sold by other we don't have uh, very liberal finance with us uh, that was costly we cannot expand land is very uh, you can say pricey again so what to do should we shift out of this location or something else can be done so in this process basically when we reflected and we found that uh, that there are some companies where we can look forward uh, so we identify a company that is called it steel can you shift to the next slide hello next slide thank you so this is the uh, we came to know about this company this is the it steel basically it is a, a small company in house company of toyota steel uh, toyota which was a uh, leading automobile which is a leading automobile manufacturer in 1934 it was separated uh, and make an independent steel company and it was basically toyota idea that you have to have your own steel if you want to make a good car so, and uh, by doing this uh, uh, this is how they have grown up that initially they were steel making then stainless steel and then ultimately forging and then smart company they become so we have identified that okay if we can become a part of toyota probably it could be it could become possible for us to survive but then next slide sarita ji next slide thank you so this is the profile of uh, now you can look at the map we were in punjab in uh, sitting in the corner and giving maximum to maharashtra or karnataka now here is a company which is some corner of japan and they are having manufacturing in china in korea in silicon valley usa and then in uh, uh, philippines then in indonesia then in china and in japan also and in thailand also and they are catering to the a great market of india so if a small company let us say sitting there can do this then can we do something our constraints are real constraint killing constraints but can we overcome them and we also found that by going normal way by cutting cost by expanding or by becoming a supplier to somebody we would not be able to survive so we look upon this company as a role model and decided to join hand with them next one thank you so and fortunately that company it was also planning to uh, uh, grow because they are also having it uh, they wanted to supply toyota and more cars made in india to in asia as well as uh, the western country so they are also looking somebody to whom they can shake hand and for us it was also very important i wanted to mention that this is a time when lot of car makings are uh, going to be you uh, some some sort of electric electric cars so you will be having a very less number of uh, less quantity of steel per unit of the cars purchased or sold so this was the case so we also need to grow because because our gen general demand is also going down so next one thank you so when we talk to this it company and uh, after lot of deliberation it has taken almost 7 year of the md mr sachi jain to visit the company and convince them about vardhaman because japanese are generally they are very reluctant they do not rely other so easily so anyway before coming to and ultimately we made an agreement with them but what kind of agreement it will be uh, they said that it initially it will be friendly we will see that what are you doing and then we will see that whether we can have some relationship with you or not and fortunately then we made a plan to work with them and then they said first of all we wanted to see the first column is the that is the safety they said that uh, in japan we have a clear practice that we don't allow any unsafe activity in the plant so first of all you want to ensure that you do uh, take care of the safety element so it means that we are simply not looking at profit we are not looking at cost cutting we are not looking at any kind of innovation we are simply told you yeah, do you behave properly and be safe fortunately vardhaman has never seen an any accident uh, in steel plant 
but uh, we were told that, that first of all we will go there it was very painful because uh, we, we were bleeding with money uh, crisis and they said ki they simply don't care for that they simply said you you first of all you need to be safe and then they come to the quality the, this is the second area they said we wanted to judge what you are doing here so we ref reflected upon quantity this quality that they said you uh, and i have only one parameter of quality that your rejection should be low your customer satisfaction should be high and then we do that we followed what they said and uh, we uh, certainly gained uh, in terms of you can say lower level of rejections or so and third was production that we wanted to inc increase production they said that first of all we wanted to see that to increase production it is important you uh, lost very few uh, uh, quantity as a wastage or as a you can say uh, invisible loss or visible losses so they said it reduces the losses and losses were reduces from around 10% to 2% and cost and they said that you need to make japanese quality with chinese price because if you cannot beat the chinese prices there is no question of coming to india so vardhaman special steel work on all these issues and uh, to you can say to be to become acceptable to the chinese uh, to japanese next slide thank you and uh, once we do that we we did this our um, homework and after this homework this is what they said in marketing we will they will help us once they convince themselves on all these parameters whether they are uh, related to the cost cutting or they are related to the profit making or not with no uh, you can say attention to that they have just did an overall from a distance they watch vardhaman special steel and coming close to the vardhaman special steel they uh, they keep on watching and after that they said okay we will go and now we will ask our maruti toyota ig ford and japanese other or orient Uh, original brand making equipment making that take take steel from vardhaman from in asian market also and they said okay we they finally this is how they have got agree to it and next slide so this is if we try to uh, this this overall seven eight year journey if we try to step in three area so step one was uh, convincing the japanese and uh, uh, doing what they said improve our standard operating practices kaizen activities gamba approach and improve safety levels improve quality reduce rejections and second was convince our customer our customer service to improve the level of the japanese and uh, uh, the, the, to to yama to masuki the jnkk toyota ig to all these people to go and meet their customer satisfaction level once they prepared us totally then they said us ki now you go and meet these clients convince them and once we did they said now let us talk about expansion and probably in the third phase from 222 onward they will be coming up and uh, what i wanted to insist upon that where it, the profit margin in steel business in the same businesses uh, around 2000 2000 rupees per ton is a normal but they said that if you supply to the japanese you will be taking a 7000 rupees uh, uh, prices per ton as a profit so this is a great and now all our uh, problems which is related to the higher electricity cost high transportation cost not availability of the raw material they all were important and critical so far we were competing with all we were one of the all or one of the many but when we have you can say taken this uh, turn and all these things become you can say all you can say uh, acceptable and you manageable by staying at the same places from where we thought that there is no way out so this is uh, what Uh, we did, and it is different from all the strategy that we have followed in the last fifteen years. That we never have basically uh, we have reflected on our business from an outside, from the some outside perspective. Next slide. So I I cannot say that what we have done it is a strategic innovation, but I can definitely say that what we have done it is certainly not a normal strategy that we have been doing in the fifty years. So. Uh, it i i feel that probably it is some sort of a reflection like a witnessing that we were witnessing in in vipassana you do witnessing your actions your thoughts your feeling in this we did uh, this uh, you can say overall we did witnessing we, uh, about, about the our what we are producing our products what processes we are following what inputs we are using what you can say with mindset we are working what our uh, what are our hr prospects Uh, uh, and our procedures with no reference that uh, how it is going to impact the bottom lines or reduce the cost which is generally you can say always set the strategic objective so basically it is just like we feel that it is the process of uh, uh, reinventing vss or saving vss going down and making it an excellent company or probably the first company in this country 
uh, which will be a sole supplier of the Japanese automobile manufacturers. So it is some sort of a rediscovering ourselves. It is some sort of a re-identifying uh, uh, ourselves so to a new level of existence. This is uh, the, what we feel. I feel uh, now we request to sir that uh, please guide us that whether this is whether it has even a crude form of strategic innovation. A overall, is it strategic innovation? Uh, is a it is a skill, or it is a science, or it is a knowledge, knowing some techniques, or or it is simply a level of attitude or a new kind of awareness that that comes within in which we review everything. So with this, uh, I uh, conclude my submissions, and I also request all, all the faculty, faculty member to use this opportunity to uh, learn the strategic innovation uh, technique, which is I, I'm not very much used uh, uh, in, my, in present practices, even in, in the industry, and uh, see that how you can uh, uh, use this in writing some case study, including cases and many more. And then whatever you learn from it, you keep it in the public domain so that people in industry like us can use it and see that how our experiences can lead to theorizing or how this theory of strategic innovation can help us in meeting the same situation. And uh, this is what we have been doing in the CTFART also that a small uh, effort we did uh, in form of NGO uh, to promote and create information though basically in the field of textiles and compel and I can say with some amount of proud that it carry all the weekly basis market intelligence of world textile industry from the last six to seven years. On weekly basis, probably that may not be available anywhere. So I believe that from this kind of webinar, we will also able to generate some information or knowledge which we will be putting at some place platform for the public use. Uh, with this, I thank you very much, Sarita ji. This is my last slide. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your valuable insights. Now it's time to welcome our esteemed guest and speaker for today's session, Dr. Suresh K. Chadda, Professor and Ex-Chairman, UBS Punjab University, Chandigarh. Dr. Chadda is a man of highly academic stature. I feel like midget in front of his academic and research profile. Dr. Chadda is having a rich teaching experience of more than 40 years. In these four decades, he has immense contribution in the field of education and research. He has received his doctoral degree in the year 1991. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Dr. Harish Anand, please, can you mute yourself? Thank you, sir. Thank you. He has received his doctoral degree in the year 1991, and since then, he is working for the upliftment of education and research standards. His major research interests are international business, marketing, CRM, logistics, and supply chain management. He has more than 100 research papers and articles in leading national and international journals. He has delivered numerous key foot addresses for n number of seminars and conferences at national and international level. He has also chaired and co-chaired numerous sessions in national and international conferences. Even we, the faculty of SSCCM, had pleasure of listening to him at the international conference organized by our college in the month of February itself. Dr. Chadda was awarded with the Best Researcher Award by Punjab Commerce and Management Association and Himachal Pradesh Commerce and Management Association. More than 50 and are pursuing PhD under his able guidance. Dr. Chadda is with developing management development programs of public sector banks, government undertakings, and various universities. He has undertaken UGC sponsored projects. Can we start? Can we start? I'm, I'm a learner. I don't know. Right, Hello? Sir, right. sir, I'm a learner. Right. So, Dr. Harish, uh, Dr. Harish, that is. You are a practical person. Uh, uh, hello? Uh, yes, sir. Dr. Harish is there or he has left? Dr. Harish is there? No, he's, he's there, sir. He's there. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Harish, for giving that is, you are giving a practical, uh, what say, output to this strategic innovation. So, first of all, it's always an honor to be uh, here in Aurobindo College under the dynamic leadership of. Uh, 
Shri Oswalji, and uh, it's always an honor. And I am really grateful for giving me an honor uh, to interact with the students and the faculty, uh, the principal, uh, Mr. Ajay Sharma. So, Dr. Ajay Sharma. So, thank you very much. So, I'll I'll just try to give you. Uh, am my this PPT is audible or not? Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. PPT is PPT is visible. Uh, not right, sir. It's fine. Uh, is it? Sir, I suppose you haven't shared it yet. Me, I've already shared. Sir, Hello? it is not visible. It is not visible, sir. Okay, then uh, let me. Uh, I'll try to see that how the what I would like to say is that. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay, so uh, because most of the time I'll be speaking from my own voice. So what is important is that uh, today we talk. We are talking about strategic innovation. Dr. Hariji, I am talking about three things. One is the innovation. The second is the system, and the third is the strategy. That's very very important. I'll just start with the why innovation has become so important. If you just see that in 1850s, when the industrial revolution was there, we had invented steam engine. There was a the power. Sir, video on, करले जरा. Doctor Chetta, video on करले कि आपके देख ले हम आपको. नहीं नहीं मैं फिर मेरी वो नहीं पता चलेगी ना. I am seeing my own presentation. अच्छा. Okay okay. So what is what was important is that uh, 1850s. What happened that the U UK was dominant in that during that time. Steam engine was invented. Power looms were there, and they knew that whatever were being produced that was being sold to the colonials. Then came the era of what? Then came the era of USA. Fifty eighteen fifties to nineteen forty five, and in that case, uh, what happened was that the USA they started large steel plant was there, large scale manufacturing industry was there. And in that case, the capital was very cheap, and the country like USA had huge resources. They dominated. Then came in 1945 that when after the Second World War, the Japan was totally destroyed, and Japan had a very few natural resources. They wanted to go into for more scale, but at the same time, they were thinking about low inventories, and they wanted to have the strong control over the operations. And you must be knowing that they started with the lean manufacturing system. They wanted that the lean manufacturing system that what was the actual process and what was the idle process, and if there was any deviation, that was a waste. So after that, now we talk about what? Now we are talking about innovation. Today, innovation has become very, very important. So my take for today is that the college, like Shri Aurobindo, where education is very important. I have seen that growth of this college. Plus, if we have the innovation, and if we are using the intensity of the technical use. So what is going to happen? The economic growth is going to take place. So I, what I'm finding is that today, in the era of knowledge economy, it's very, very important that we have to what we have to innovate. And if we are not innovating, we are not in the market. So I will just try to see that we had passed through the COVID-19 crisis. Even textile industries have been hit. So many industries have been hit. So what's important in that case, the COVID crisis, this crisis will not go soon. You have to build scenario, and you have to plan, and you have to innovate. Only then we can sustain. A vaccine is few months away. This is a transit event history which people will talk about for the next hundred years, like it was in the Spanish flu, which took in 1920s. And there will be winners, and there will be the losers. So what I just wanted to tell you that my students and some of the company people they have negative emotions, the concern of the well-being of you and your family. that going to be a biggest concern during this covid crisis then the job market volatility is there a lot of job market volatility is there i had been the director for 9 years in the punjab university so what i'm finding that the job market volatility is there and the other thing is the stress 
anxiety is there, a lot of stress is there, and salary and financial expectations. You will find that people are losing salaries, financial expectations are very high, and the fear of disruption. What I'm finding that the fear of disruption, I never use this word, online teaching, but now what I'm doing is that there is a disruptive teaching now. Now we are all into what? Now we are all into the new what? We are all into the new paradigm. And now the positive emotions are also there. That is the changing situations, we are changing. We are finding opportunities like what Mr. Harish Ji was saying that they are finding opportunities. That's very, very important. And the other thing is, strategy means you should have some goal. And goal should always be, you always try to win. That's very important. And the other thing is, when I talk about the strategy, I always say that there should be sustainable profits. That's very, very important. You have to do better than your competitors. And in this particular case, when I'm talking about the strategy, the profits will not only depend upon your resources, upon the performance of your company, the profit will also depend on what? The profit will depend on your competitors. The profit will depend on what Sir has already described that the profit will depend on the competitors. Profit will also depend on the Porter's five forces model. Like if the bargaining power of the suppliers are increased, the profit of the company will decline. If the power of the bargaining power of the consumers are increased, the profit will decline. And if suppose you are having more substitutes in the market, like now you just was, Mr. Harishanji was talking about that now you are finding electric cars, definitely the demand for the steel is going to be going down. So what I'm just trying to tell you, so when you have to be the profitable, sustainable profits, it's not only you have to see your own resources, you have to see what type of environment we are having. You have to do the environmental analysis, what they have rightly done it. So that is what we talk about. So the changing situation, you have to change according to the change situation and the sense of freedom. You have got more freedom now. You can do much better. Earlier, never I thought that I would be delivering lecture in various parts of the country. Like if I was having a lecture in Chennai, I was having a lecture in Hyderabad, in Bombay. So that is, and the more excitement is there. And this is the time where you can invest in yourself. So COVID crisis will be over. So always be positive. Always be motivated. So what I would like to say is that in the 20th century, success has been based. It has all based on the innovation. Whatever advances has taken place, like from cars to computers to internet. Now we are having, we talk about Six Sigma, we are having CSR, we are having globalization, production networks, efficient logistics. This has been possible only because of innovation. So innovation is very, very important. Innovation is the key in the changing environment and the companies which are not innovative, they cannot sustain. So I think that the world is becoming digital now. You'll find that you now what I foresee in the coming time, the world is going to become digital. There will be digital transformations arising from the emerging technologies that will drive innovation. The frequency and pace of digital driven innovation is increasing. Corporations are left with no option but to embrace innovation. So I think that today in this current environment, no audition can sustain if they don't embrace innovation. I always tell my students that the students should always be what? The students should always have what? They should always be creative. And creativity means that you have to think out of the box. I think that in this college, I have learned from Dr. Ajay Sharma, the principal, that a lot of activities are being carried out. They are doing a lot of case studies. They are doing a lot of problem solving skills are being announced for the people so that they can work. They can be creative because today the need of the R is that you have to think what? You have to think out of the box. I, I just give you one example that I, I talked, I will be talking about the systems. Systems are very, very important in, in case of the strategic innovation. Like I give you an example, like in the Renaissance time, which was in the 15th century, when the invention of feed, the lot of architectural development was taking place, like the octagonal rib dome was, was it developed at, during that time. And do you know it was by the Brunel, Brunel sheet? And the other thing was that it was the Sistine Chapel ceiling models were there, Michel Lango. And then Mona Lisa was developed by Leonardo de Vinci, 
we'll see. So what I'm just trying to tell you that these were the time where a lot of innovation, a lot of creativity was there. And it was there that, it was not that people were creative at that time. Today also people are creative. But what was there, the system was there. I'm just talking about in the system was that the rewards and incentives were there. Whosoever was a creator, they had to what? They had to be what? They had to be properly rewarded. So in an organization, if you want that the people should be more creative, you have to give them more autonomy, you have to give them more flexibility, and you have to give them what? You have to give the rewards and incentives so that they can become what? They can become more creative. Michel Langlo's talents were identified when he was 13 years old. So what I would just want to tell you that the talent is always developed at younger age. So I would love that this college should also try to identify the innovative people, the creative people, so that they can do something different for the organization and something different for the society. So I, I'll just tell you that what the students should do in this particular case, if you want to have the creativity traits, and even in the organizations, you, you have to choose your system wisely. The, you choose your system wisely means they have to be very, very clear. Am I audible? Am I audible, Ajay? Hello? You are audible, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes. The first thing which is very important, I am talking about something about the system. The system is that you have to join a good education institution because you learn from there, where you are given autonomy, where you are given certain type of flexibility that you can give a time of thinking. That's very, very important. That's the first creativity date among the students and among the employees that you should give them what? You should choose the system wisely. My daughter was in BCG and in BCG what they used to do they used to ask the employees, employees to give the ideas. And on that idea, they used to do the activity. They used to translate that idea into what? Into some business model. That sort of system has to be prevailed. That is what is very, very important. And the second thing is, why in our young youth is not innovative, we are always afraid of failure. I think that failure should not be what? We should not worry about the failures. Even Steve Jobs failed. Even you just see the every person who has been, even Microsoft, Bill Gates, he failed when he invented Windows 1. So what I'm just trying to tell you, failure is important. We have to work. We have to see that we should not get what We should not get even Thomas Edison. He was failed 10,000 times. He said that it was not my failure, it was my processes. That type of attitude has to be developed. Nothing to worry about the failures. I, I still want to find a person who has risen if he has not failed in his life. I tell you, in MNCs, what the companies do, they allow their people to make mistakes. Because if they make mistakes only, then they can work. That's That type of system is there. And if they make that type of admitting mistakes, that will help in what? That will help in getting what? That will help in making them more creative. They learn from the mistakes. And I don't want that you should fail and you should carry the emotional baggage. Fail, fail fast. Forget about that and think about the new venture. And the third thing which is very important, you have to be inculcate the culture of self-confidence. Let them be self-confident. All of you who are listening to my lecture, all of you are very, very competent. All of you have a lot of potential. I don't know nothing. I'm just a learner. So you have to work. My humble submission to all my teachers and all my officers are that you have to motivate your subordinates. Every person has the potential. Every person can deliver. Every person the God has given the mind, <clears throat> they can think differently. And the fourth thing is, you should always, now one thing which, why my youngsters are not become creative in our organization also, we have stopped using our gut feeling. We have stopped using our intuition. Intuition is very important. Try to develop that intuition. Don't depend totally on your mobile phones. Sometimes I feel that when I go and deliver a class, I ask the student to hand over the mobile phone, they behave as if I demanded the kidney. They are so attached to the mobile phone, they are so attached to the internet. So what I just want to tell you, 
Intuition is very important. Gut feeling, whatever they should do, have the gut feeling, whatever decision have to be taken, and then they should challenge themselves. That's very important. What I'm very important is that my, why we have to challenge our students. A system should be that we have to challenge them. And if they are challenged, don't let them be in the comfort zone. Give them some challenging tasks. That is very, very important. And I just, uh, Harishi, are you listening? Harishi, are you on the, hello? 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 Good morning, sir. I'm here. I am here, sir. I, uh, my daughter is studying in ISB. And uh, can you imagine, I would love that my students should go and visit ISB. Your uh, college should go there and see that the students are working 14 hours a day, 14 hours they are reading. That's very, very important that they are challenged every time. That's very, very important. If you are challenged, you are going to do wonders. So that is what I talk about. And then practice mindfulness. Always try to use your brains. I'm just telling you all of you are very creative. You can do wonders. I, I'll be just telling you how you can try to have. These are the creativity traits which any organization, which any what say school or which any what say college should adopt. That they should always try to choose a system wise education where they can find some freedom, where they can have some innovative ideas. Like I always say that. Uh, uh, esteemed Oswalji, he is an entrepreneurship leader. Entrepreneurship leaders are the leader who try to what? Who try to grow with the limited resources. What I listened from Dr. Harishi that today we need entrepreneur leadership. Entrepreneur leadership means with the scale resources, how you are going to make your projects what? How you are going to make your projects viable? Just I give an example of Padman. Murugan, that is the Murugan from Ch Chennai. He has come up with what cheap, what say pads in that case. And do you know how much the profit is? They are posing a lot of threat to HUL and they are posing a lot of threat to PNG, Procter and Gamble. So what I'm trying to give that today in this environment we have to what we have to challenge them. So I always admire that my leader should always be what entrepreneurship leaders. Entrepreneurship leader means that. With the limited resources, they should try to come out with the project and try to see that how to make that what, how to make that project viable, and that type of challenge has to be there in the coming time. So this is these are some of the system which has to be created in the organization in order to what, in order to have what, in order to make the people more creative. And the other thing is the competences. I always tell that if in a organization if you want to have more creative people one thing is you should capture the ideas ask them that all the employees whenever they get an idea they should try to what they should try to see there and then and note it down what type of idea is coming and that should be noted and brought to the notice of the superior and if you be remembering that Toyota, when they applied the Toyota management systems or the lean manufacturing system in the Toyota production, they ask their employees, wherever they're finding any waste, immediately report. And that's how they try to what? They try to eliminate the waste and that's how they try to come out with a better car at a cheaper price. So I would love that my young students and the employees of the organization they should always carry their pen and the paper so that whenever any ideas come, they should immediately what? They should immediately try to what? Immediately try to note it down and bring it to the notice of what? Bring it to the notice of the... Because small, small Kaiser means that small, small improvements can what? Can result into a huge improvement. So that small improvements can be noted and that can result into the... And the second thing is you have to challenge them. That's very important. That is never be afraid of failures. Nothing to worry because I, I just see that uh, when I have written more than 80 papers, my papers have also been rejected, but I never got disheartened. So I would love that they should be challenged. They should be asked that, okay, give us some new ideas. Like I always feel, uh, Dr. Harishji, that like in MNCs, they always ask the youngsters to give us ideas that how 
we can do better in the coming times? What type of things can be improved? So that type of challenge has to be there. And the third thing which is very important, that is you have to see the surroundings. You have to be an observer. How you can what? How you can look at your competitor's product, what they are doing differently, see what type of thing they are doing. So these are the things which will help in creating what individual creativity among the employees and among the students. So I think uh, what I would now like to tell you I, that is strategic innovation. Uh, Dr. Rishi, uh, Principal Saab, I attended one conference and in that case in the Harvard and that is the idea which came that that is strategic innovation that is listen to the customer. I tell you, innovation, 80% innovation comes from the customer. That's very important. That is, the customer feedback is very, very important. That is, I always find that the customer feedback, I just give an example, like in the customer feedback, the flexibility. If you listen to the customer, you have to be flexible and change according to the time. That is to understand the change because the customer they are asking for new things and they can bring about change in the organization they can bring change in what in the company i, I just give an example like nokia it was formed in 1865 and in finland and it was having a market share of more than 50 percent in 2007 and today in 2013 it is less than five percent they, because what they did, they never changed their word, they never changed their software because Apple and the other Samsung, they went into for their own operating systems and they never listened to what, they never listened because the customer wanted more apps, the customer wanted that how we can be more connected and so what is important is that that's why they lost the market. So you have to work. Whatever changes are taking place, the customer is very, very aware about the things. So you have to what? You have to listen to your customer. That's very important. And in that case, the flexibility is the ability to recognize and accommodate change. Always be ready for the change. That's the first thing. And the second thing is adaptability. Adaptability means to adjust, change, and modify yourself. You have to change according to what? According to the customer needs. I give another example of this. It was a blockbuster. It was started in 1985. They were giving videos on rental basis. And do you know that it was having a huge demand, but suddenly Netflix came out with what? But one thing which went against them was they were penalizing the customers who were making delay in giving back the videos. And Netflix, what they did, they started subscription model that whatever time you want to keep the videos, you can retain it at your places and we are not concerned about that. And today you just see that blockbuster is now totally out of the market and you just see Netflix is in the during the COVID times also, they have done, done wonders. So the second advice listening to the customer is that you have to what? You have to adapt you have to make the changes and modify according to the customer needs that's the second thing and the third thing is executability that is executability means you have to what you have to execute in a better way here also i give you one another example like taxi magic that which uber has started they were also hiring the what's it, cars and giving it on what taxi was there and in 2008, it was started. But what happened? They were not able to work. They were not able to meet what? The payment system was not good. The, the delay was there in getting a car. But what the Uber came up? The Uber came up with a better payment system. They came out with a better execution. So that's why they sustained in the market. So what I'm just trying to tell you, Listening to the customers are very, very important. I, I just feel that the mindset of Indian companies are that we have to 
go into for what we have to start a business where the gdp growth rate is high where you are finding more customers but mnc they will always find the place where the customers are demanding because if the customers are demanding the improvement in the processes improvement in the product is going to be there so that's the first thing the strategic innovation innovation can only take place if you are listening to the people customers and trying to be flexible try to be adaptable and try to execute in a much better way than your competitors only then you can sustain so that's the first thing and the second thing which is important is the employee engagement you have to engage your employees if i'm just telling you that engagement of employees are very important if you engage everybody in that you will find your systems are going to be improved everybody have to be what everybody has to be involved and when i was a chairman sometime i even get the ideas from my subordinates and they were much better so in this particular case you have to what you have to give what you have to think about that how we are going to what how we are going to give what how we are going to be better than what how we are going to be in, in, involving everybody involve everybody in that because now you just see why japanese are more successful they even involve the suppliers they even involve their dealers in the decision making process so that they can also help them in providing what help them in providing better things and the third thing which is very important benchmarking i always find that you have not to compromise on quality just see i was listening to dr harishan that is the japanese they never compromise on quality they were ready to pay instead of 2000 per ton they were ready to pay 7000 per ton because they know that quality is the key benchmarking if you just see the walmart they have benchmarked themselves with what benchmark themselves with the best supply chain management i i will i will advise my students just go and read the books good to great by jim collins today in the competitive environment good is not going to sustain you have to be the greatest you have to come out with what something unique you have to come out with something different only then you are going to be what only then you are going to be having what only then you are going to have the better things and the fourth thing is values are very important i think in any organization if you are giving the values that is very very important because strategic innovation cannot take place without the values i just tell you in like sir has talked about the values are the fundamental beliefs which the organization has to follow and the behavior is there the first value is integrity integrity means let the employees make mistakes don't penalize them that is very important no doubt its honesty is there creditworthiness is there but we should always try to be what we should always try to create an environment where mistakes are there nothing to worry something better will come out and the second thing is self responsibility make your employees more self responsible accept the challenge they should be ready to accept the challenge that's very important and the third thing is you have to what passion for winning create an environment where they will always have the passion for winning they want to have what we want to win in the race that type of passion for winning is the third value and if you just see the southwest airlines if you just see the low cost airlines which was the first to start up and they had so much of passion that every employee was so motivated that they wanted that we have to win against the large airlines and they did it so that type of the passion for winning is there inculcated and the last thing is you have to be people recruit people on knowledge and skills no compromise on quality that's very important and the people should respect diversity because that's very important i would love that in some of our in our universities or in other things why we are going down because there is no cultural diversity we are having inbreeding system and that inbreeding system is resulting into what in resulting into 
not coming up because when I joined the university, we find so many people from different states. But now what is happening? More and more inbreeding is taking place. So that also impacts the innovativeness in the organization. So I think, and the other thing is you have to create value proposition. So strategy has to be with the operations. Even if your product is very good, pricing is very good, if you fail in your operations, you are nowhere. That is operations and strategy goes together. That is you have to what? Today your product may be good, your, now you just see Domino Pizza, what they have done, they have improved their operations that okay, we will deliver the product anywhere if you want our order in 30 minutes. That's the value proposition. Oyo Hotels, just see that what they are giving. They are giving the best value proposition to the customers. In USA, the hotel industries, the value proposition is who can provide them the best matrices. So what I'm just trying to tell you that you have to create value proposition. That is what we talk about the strategic innovation. That strategic innovation means listen to the customers. Don't ignore them. The feedback is very important. Be flexible, be adaptable, be what execute immediately. Don't and the employee engagement, employee engagement is very important. And you have to benchmark it. No compromise on quality. Because in the social media, if you commit one defect is there, the people, the viral marketing takes place and your all brand image goes down. And the last thing is the values and these are the some of the strategic innovation which has to be taken into account in this what's the strategic innovation hello am i audible anybody wants to ask any question or we can take the question later on hello so we have planned yes, it later phase so we will okay, take so, up the questions at the end so what i would like that uh, today uh, in this i i would like that all of you are leaders. I have classified leaders into my own things that one is the strategic leadership. Strategic leadership means that the person like what sir was saying that this is all the strategic leadership. We form a strategy, we try to see that how the strategy works and we try to see the competitors and we try to see that how we can increase the profits, we see the environment, we see the power of suppliers, power of bargaining, bargaining power of the buyers and the substitutes and all the entrants which are there in the market. That is the strategic leadership and how we have to do better. And the second type of leadership is a thought leadership. Ratan Tata is a thought leadership. He always think how we can do better to the public. And that is the type of leadership is there. Even Dr. Oswalji is also that when he started this institute, he always wanted that how we can do give best to our students. And the third type of entrepreneurial leadership, that how with the minimum resources, you can do better. That type of leadership is there. And I would love that in the innovation, you have to think that how we can cut down the waste, how we can cut down the cost, how we can provide value to the customer with the minimum cost. That type of leaders we need. Aravind Ahi Hospital, if you just see Jaipur Foot, if you just see that in India, if you just see that uh, 3M, all of you know that it's one of the leading innovative company in the world. And do you know 3M Scotch Bright is a product of 3M. They are providing the best quality at what? The minimum cost. That is what we talk about. And the last is the people leadership. People leadership, Satya Nadella. When he took as the Microsoft CEO, the profits have gone increased many fold. Do you know what he has done? One of his son is, I suppose, he's having some mentally, mental problem is there. And do you know what he came? He came up with a software which can be used by the blind. That was that that the people and that turned the entire Microsoft. They are doing something for the society. That is how the people leadership Satin Nadella. So these are some of the types of the leaders which I would love that 
some of you should become strategic leaders some of you should become thought leaders some of you should become entrepreneurship leaders and some of you should become a people leadership and that all will help in making your strategy much better and that will result into better what company future right so these are some of the leadership which we just talked about and so i just want to give you that my students now all the that whether you are working teachers you have to go for like lifelong learning today things are changing so fast i cannot be satisfied i have to be what learn unlearn and relearn that's very important don't stop learning if you want to be a star then the second thing is willing to embrace change change is very important change is very very important and share the success always share the success and the other thing is sometimes i get so disturbed i am talking only about iq i don't talk about eq i don't talk about relationship at the end of the day only relationship matters if you just see that uh, big companies they are developing relationships they are having networking so that is what we talk about you have to learn to make certain projects which will add value so that is how you can be excellent in your job that is how we talk about that you can be and so what i would like to tell you is that you are all very good you are all having a unlimited power all of you are having lot of uh, knowledge skills keep upgrading so these type of sessions or the webinar which are being organized they are very very important always try to listen to them and always try to improve that's i i'm just a learner i don't know anything because whatever little knowledge i had i just try to what try to explain so that is to keep you motivated i my thing is that we always uh, the purpose of my student is not clear they are not clear about the purpose they should be made clear that for what you are doing education and they should along with the education they should also have some creativity that's very important because i think that if you should motivate the youngsters that along with the good education creativity skills are very important and that will help in what that will help in making the student much more vibrant and according to and the second thing is tell them to be outstanding very clear outstanding is very important you have to be greatest in any because now the companies are not looking for people who are average they are looking for the people who are outstanding and the third thing is you should always have what you should be always be tough risk taking don't be a worse of risk taking try to inculcate some sort of adventure trainings some sort of things where they challenge them so that they can have what they can become the entrepreneur that third skill which i would like to give that and then you should also tell them that what vision they should have what they want to be five year down the line and what they are doing it that these type of things should be what these type of things should be inculcated in the students and if you find that if these are in, inculcated you will find they can be a good citizen and they can contribute to the economic growth of the country so this is what i would like to say and then my learning points are always be humble no egos ego means earnings go out and you just see that if you are having a ego you cannot sustain the second thing is empowerment empower your teachers empower your subordinates the third thing is live in the moment moment is very important ideas only come in the if you live in the moment so when i talk about if you are having mindful your mind is already full with garbage then you cannot innovate always have mindfulness your mind should be empty that is very important if you are listening to the lecture you should only if you are doing certain things focus on that 
live in the present. That's very important. And the other thing is value of relationships and the family and resources are limitless. So what I just want to tell you, you have to be what? You have to have the dreams, you should have the vision. And if you have the vision, you can do what? You can do wonders in your order. And uh, I think that uh, my last slide will be that always be motivated. Always have, don't have your mind full. Have mindfulness, keep your mind empty. And always try to be gratitude that you are studying in the best college run by the best organization and the management. Be thankful to the God, thankful to your parents. That type of gratitude has to be there. And the last thing is that you have to what? You have to have the habit of total acceptance. Surrender the God and without any what? Everything, whatever I am here, if I am here, it's only because of the grace of the God. It's only the destiny. If I have met Dr. Ishii, and it's all because of the thing. So I think that is what I just want to tell. So I'll just share one small joke. Uh, Riji, all of you are it's audible. My voice is audible. Yes, 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 sir. Very much, yes, sir. sir. So there are how many how many girl students are here? Hello. How many there are many, many of them are there, sir. Okay, so uh, they would, one boy came to his father, uh, to his mother, and said, I am confused. The mother said, how come you are confused? He, she asked the son. The little boy said, my father is, the father is saying that our ancestors were monkeys. And you are saying that your ancestors were angels. I am confused. The mother replied, he is talking about his ancestors. I am talking about my ancestors. So I think today the need of the art is the girls are doing very good and they have to be more innovative. They have to be more creative. Even boys are doing better. So I think that type of thing has to be created. And that is what I talk about, the strategic innovation. Whatever Sarah said is a practical. I'm just trying to give you that example that if the customers, if you don't employ this not being involved, if you don't benchmark yourself, if you don't have the values, if you don't have what? The value proposition, the strategy and the operation, if they don't work together, that organization can never sustain. Like just I give an example, like GM Motors, they shut up their plants in India because they were not providing value proposition at the time of what? Because after sales service, they were not having that good after sales service. So that's what we talk about. Thank you very much. So any question, if I did there, I've already taken a lot of time because I want that 12.30, the final time, five, 10 minutes, we can have some discussion on this. That will help the students. They want to ask any questions. They are most welcome. Thank you very much for the patient listening. Thank Hello. You, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Students, do you have any queries? You can post in the chat box or you can unmute yourself. Anybody, anybody have? Hello? Or faculty, if you want to ask anything from our learned guest, you can please. So I think if you want, am I audible now? Yes, sir. You are audible. Uh, am I on the screen now? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Am I okay? Yes, sir, Anyone, any student want to have any question, any point? Hello. Hello. Students, students, if you wish to ask, you can please unmute yourself and you can raise your queries. Hello. Yes, sir. sir you, you are audible, sir. You are audible, sir. Anybody wants to ask any yes. question? Pranshu, you can unmute yourself, Peter. Uh, good Pranshu morning, Jain. sir. Um, Honored to meet you today. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. Last year, uh, I started going to my, uh, with my father to his office. Mm -hmm. and, uh, there's always come the situation such that you आप अपने हाथ से तो रख लेते हैं और ये कहते हैं चलो घर चले अब नहीं होगा तो 
आप अपने कल्चर में आप अपने कॉपरेट्स में ये अपने कैसे एम्प्लॉज को मोटिवेट करते हैं और प्रेरणा देते हैं सबको आगे बढ़ने की देखो एक तो ये होता है ना आई थिंक व्हाट इज इम्पोर्टेंट इज दैट यू हैव टू व्हाट यू हैव टू मोटिवेट योर एम्प्लॉज इवन इफ दे डू अ स्मॉल था मोटिवेट दे it's not that we people i tell you that sometimes we are so negative we don't try to work even i in my class even if a student has done a little bit good thing i motivate them and if suppose he has done a wrong thing we will not try to straight away demotivate him we will try to explain him this is the reason that why you are gone very wrong you have to coach them you have to mentor them the problem with us is that we think that our subordinates are the slaves and we have to work that is not like that you have to change your attitude because today in this environment i think when we are talking about everybody has the potential if you suppose a employee has done something wrong mistakes are committed so you should always try to work always try to coach them mentor them that okay these are the things which we have to improve upon this would have been done better okay you tell me how we could have done better so that type of attitude have to be adopted by the organizations and by the everywhere even the teachers have to work even the teachers have to counsel them from time to time that's very important hello yes sir hello yes, sir. you you are you were audible sir and i hope pranchu you got your answer Pranshu. Pranshu. Anybody else? Hello. Anybody else who wants to ask? We are interact. I am interacting with the best college. Lot of position this time has been backed by you. So I would love that there should be some more questions. Hello. Students, please do ask certain questions so that we can enrich our knowledge. Uh, good so morning, sir. You, uh, you ask some faculty members to participate if those who are attending. All right, sir. I think there is some student online. Yes. Uh, yes, who was? Yes, yes, yes. Please. Uh, good morning, sir. Sir, mm -hmm. actually, I was that uh, that uh, innovative idea and innovative product can lead to a great startup. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, do. Uh, ये हमें मार्केटिंग रिसर्च करनी पड़ती है इसके बारे में तो सर कौन से ऐसे रिसोर्सेज हैं जिसके बाद जिससे हम मार्केट को और भी मतलब करीब से जान सकते हैं और मतलब मार्केट में एकदम जो चल रहा है उसको देख सकते हैं मतलब स्टडी आपको जब आप कोई प्रोडक्ट कर रहे हैं तो मैंने आपको पहले ही बताया यू टू सी योर कम्पिटिटर्स आपको अपना कंप्यूटर देखना चाहिए कंप्यूटर क्या कर रहा है फिर आपको क्या करना है यू हैव टू कैरी आउट द मार्केटिंग रिसर्च प्रॉपरली व्हाट टाइप ऑफ अभी हमने ना निक बेकर्स जो है यू मस्ट हैव गॉन टू द निक बेकर्स देखा आपने निक बेकर्स Yes. Uh, yes. Sir. And this owner is very. Uh, he's a very young guy, and I just have an opportunity to interact with him, and he said that I found that very few people are eating bread. and the population is so huge sometimes you have to use your intuition everything is not on the research and he said that i thought that if the population is so huge and the bread if even if one person eat the bread or the bun or like that then my sales are going to be increased right so sometimes you have to have the like oyo rooms now oyo rooms nitesh agarwal came up with an idea that people don't get The cheaper word, they don't 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 get the cheaper word. The uh, whenever they go out, they don't get the cheaper uh, places to stay. So that type of intuition, you have to observe what the customers are looking for. Sometimes uh, you have to read the marketing research is very important. But I think uh, uh, there should be some people going to the CII. I think there is a F. If he keeps there, you should go there and see that which are the new projects coming up. That is what I am. I teach international business. There's a World Trade Center is there. There's a website is there. You can go there and see which products are being sold, which are in the, being exported. All these things are. Only thing is you have to use your intuition. You have to see your judgment, and then you have to go to the various website and attend, observe something, and then. Conduct the market research. That's what I am going to do. 
Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir. Are you clear? There's a mixture of all these things. Any other question? Hello. Any other question from your side, students? Uh, Linu, ma'am, Manpreet, ma'am, Robin, ma'am. If you have such something to ask, you can please. I would love that people should become mentor because Ludhiana is Manchester of India. So I would love that they should try to improve their processes. They should try to see how we can do better, how we can come out with new ideas. Because when out of 3,000 ideas, there was a study which was being conducted. Out of 3,000 ideas, only one is successful. Right. So, but you should at least come up with some ideas, right? That type of uh, brainstorming should be done because there was a study recently. There was a study that when idea comes, three thousand ideas just launch. Karte hai, even then, the success rate is fifty to one. If fifty new products are launched in the market, one will be successful. But you should not have any fear, right? Uh, that is what we talk about. So, ideas should be there. You should convert, implement those ideas, try to see that how we can have or do some minor projects, do some major developments, and then you should launch the product in the market. And if you even if you launch the product in the market, even then there is a risk. But you should be ready to take what calculated risk. Entrepreneurship does not mean the risk. Entrepreneurship means that you have to take the calculated risk. What Dr. Harishi was saying that we have to take the calculated risk. Entrepreneurship does not mean that you have to take the risk. I, I always say that entrepreneurship means you have to take the calculated risk. And if you go on taking the risk like that, in that case, you will suffer the huge losses. Understood my point? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for your insight. Any other question? Anyone else? I am a learner because Dr. Harish is having a lot of practical experience. I am just trying to learn that how we can what, how the strategy and operations can be linked. That is now what is happening is products are the same, markets are the same, the supply chain management is very, very important. How you can enhance the supply chain management and how you can give better value to the customer is becoming a bigger challenge in the coming times. Hello? Anything else? Yes, sir. I don't have a question, but I would like to share something. Sir, I usually take one or two things from every webinar or session, whatever I attend. But this time I have a lot many things to learn and to grasp and to implement in our life. Your lecture is really a very motivational one other than the topic which we were discussing about strategic innovation. But you have inspired us a lot and you have instilled a inspiration or motivation amongst all of us, I suppose, because I am feeling like that. So thank you for your kind words and thank you for your valuable insight. You have really widened our horizons of knowledge. Now I invite Dr. Ajay Sharma, the dynamic principal of SSCCM, to extend a hearty vote of thanks for to today's speakers. And after that, we will have a photograph. So I request everyone, after vote of thanks, please switch on your videos. Thank you so much. Over to you, Sharma, sir. So uh, thank you for um, enlightening talk. Uh, really, uh, um, it was a great experience to firstly learn about the uh, Vartman Special Steel and its journey. Um, and uh, really, uh, we always talk about that um, uh, from the industry academia, we should learn. And the cases with the real life experience you get, um, it was a um, uh, great learning experience to learn. And um, I hopefully, uh, you know, uh, uh, Sri Rubindo College is also having uh, the practice of having the case study in different disciplines. And I hope the teachers will also learn how to share the different cases with the students, which are the practical in nature and uh, uh, go beyond the books. So it was a great learning experience. And uh, uh, it is always a great uh, privilege to learn from Professor Chadda. 
um, uh, he has contributed a lot in the development of uh, uh, UBS and other institutions also. He also acted as a uh, director at the regional center Ludhiana and uh, contributed a lot in uh, having the placements at uh, Punjab University, not only at the UBS, but all the departments. He is also acting as a governing body member in the different um, uh, renowned institutes like in the DAV College Jalandhar, RST College Chandigarh. He is also associated with Akal University and is contributing in different fields. Uh, um, he is also helping us. Last time he um, helped us a lot in organizing international seminar and hopefully um, in future, um, the soon situation will be normal and we will be having a number of events at SCCM. I know the students are also waiting and uh, we are also waiting that situation should become normal and we can um, organize in much better manner. Within the limitation of this organized framework, we are trying to run our um, college and uh, you know, um, almost uh, from the last uh, uh, two to three months we are holding the organization classes we are today in the morning we were getting the feedback from the students that how the things are uh, happening uh, uh, what type of problem they are facing in the organization environment and from the feedback whatever we can we will be planning soon and um, we will be consulting all of you also uh, that how to improve more because you know earlier we were thinking that within one month or two months situation will be normal and we will be shifting to our normal classes and uh, strategically we took the decisions to have this Microsoft team. We increased our uh, broadband also, we involved the students, we trained them and that was our strategic input and uh, uh, we were looking at how to convert soon into the uh, offering classes. But the way now the things are moving, um, it is uh, becoming more and more challenging that if um, uh, we are to continue with this online classes, how to enrich them, how to ensure that value is actually delivered to the students. And uh, uh, we are thinking day and night that all the teachers are working a great way. And um, I used to discuss a number of things in the evening with Professor Chadda, but what is happening in university and uh, what we can do for our BCom students or our BBA students or for our um, plans to introduce the post classes. And he's always helping, guiding us. And from the uh, management point of view, we are in regular touch with Dr. Harishanan. So it is my duty uh, not only to thank him from uh, both of them for today's webinar, but for the always extending a helping hand to us. And we are looking for the uh, help for the growth of institution future also. Thank you, sir. And special thanks to the uh, students who has uh, given the patient hearing. Actually, um, we could enroll only 350 students because of the uh, some limit by the Microsoft, but uh, I was getting regular calls from the students that they want to join the program, but uh, are unable because of the limit is uh, there. Um, but we will be making this available, this recording of this lecture on our YouTube channel, and it is also available in our YouTube, uh, in Microsoft stream. So those who want to, uh, those who could not attend today's session because limit was exhausted, they can uh, learn now looking at the recording. Thanks a lot. And future also, uh, I will request Professor Chadda and Dr. Harishnan that we will be organizing the events and um, they should continue to bless all of us. And um, hopefully situation will improve and we will have the um, uh, interaction in the physical setting and that will be much better. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, what, uh, Dr. Kassim, sir, what I was expecting was that more interaction would have been better because all of uh, you are one of the leading college that would have been much better. So I would love that industry academy interface. I always tell that some students and the st students along 10, 15 students should go to the industry along with the teachers and they should come out of the problems and discuss the problem in the classes. And when they discuss the problem in the classes, they can come out with the, some suggestions. That will help in what the overall confidence of the student and the creativity skills. That will be very helpful. Right? Hello? Hello? Uh, yes, sir, you were audible and we, I think Ajay sir might have listened to you. He is 
on unmute mode now. So we will take up this definitely in future. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we are already having the practice of taking the stone to industry. And um, last six, seven months, we could not because of this uh, uh, corona or so. But, you know, uh, every time we ensure that all the students should be in a position to visit to the industry and uh, learn a lot. And uh, hopefully we will revive the practice soon. So I request please uh, switch on your video so that we can have a virtual group photograph. And Jada sir, please can you adjust a little bit your camera near to your face? Thank you, sir. Yes, it is great now. So can other people can also please switch on their videos? Pranshu, please switch on your video. Divya Bajaj, Kritika, Karan, Moksh. Hurry up guys, please switch on your videos. So we are about to click the photograph. Yes, sir. thank you so much and thank you to Dr. Harish Anand, Dr. Suresh Chadda and Dr. Ajay Sharma, all the faculty members and the students for their time and wishing you all a day full of sunny smiles and happy thoughts. So good day everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.